The headlines of the last 24 hours are not surprising. It is furloughs. Let me ask a basic question. Do those people get to go back to work at some point? Well, we hope so. The point of the furloughs really is to keep people uh, as staff, but take a pause because the liquidity is really a problem. For department stores, we think they have about five to eight months of closures before it becomes quite serious. <laughs> Uh, so that's something that's being monitored. The big question here is what the pace of recovery is going to be. Is it going to be V, U, or L? And that's to be determined in terms of what we're seeing. We're hopeful that the trends in China and Asia are indicative of what could happen here as things have improved or gotten less bad. Is this good for the three major players? I mean, I know everything's shuttered and there's been the plywood stores in Chicago of Louis, Louis Vuitton and the rest of them is, well, Oliver Chen, is this good for those three major European players for them to consolidate further? Yeah, I think what we're, we're seeing in this evolution is a big getting bigger. So in terms of the stock picks that we do like, it is Louis Vuitton. And then as you look at Mass retail, we love Walmart and Target as well. Um, so consolidation is happening. It is helpful for the big and well-capitalized. And Louis Vuitton generates over $5 billion of cash flow every year. Uh, so that scale matters, and there will be smaller brands that won't make it or will get taken out. Um, we'll see that unfold, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, what do we see in the smaller retail? I mean, folks, if I come out of our world headquarters on Lexington Avenue and 59th, to my right is Bloomingdale's, Sephora, and the rest of it. And to my left is Aerie, which I've only been in once. I tried to get out as quick as I could. Danger store with uh, afterthought. And right next to it, Oliver Chen, American Eagle. How do those smaller platforms do? Yeah, we're, what's really problematic is American Eagle and Aerie have a lot of stores in the mall. Uh, the mall's going to be a tough place. It already was a tough place. But as we think about this situation, <laughs> BNC malls, which is 25 to 30 percent of the malls in the U.S., those are in a very difficult place. And already Macy's was closing stores across lower performing malls. So we will see a lot of pain in the mall. American Eagle is a good case. Sephora is owned by LVMH, beauty brand, very well capitalized, great sector. And then as we think about Bloomingdale's, that's part of the Macy's family. Employees are furloughed. They're doing their best with online sales. Uh, but clothing is a very difficult category. On the other hand, as consumers really stock up on goods and over 40 percent of households are really looking to be prepared for what's happening, Walmart, Target, Grocery Outlet, Costco, those have been beneficiaries. And as we look forward, contactless and thinking about curbside pickup and how do you shop without seeing somebody or touching somebody, that was already happening with Generation Z. Uh, so this has really accelerated a lot of the technology around the whole contactless zero checkout experience. So a lot of different things happening. But outside of uh, Bloomberg, those are discretionary stores. And those numbers are not doing well online either. So um, as Americans really think about hierarchy and needs, um, food and beverages and just wellness and nourishment is much more important than uh, the latest panties from Airy. Yeah. Oliver, when you go back to, you know, some of what you were saying that we're going to see a lot of pain in retail, is it actually going to be defaults or companies going to go into bankruptcies over this? Yeah, it very well likely could happen. I think what we've seen is a real survival mode. So capitalization has been critical. We've seen the stages of this. So suspending dividends, repurchases, cutting capex, cutting expenses and furloughing workers. So retailers are taking every step they can really to stay alive. And the key is now cash management and managing inventories. One of the main problems is the vendors to these stores are not well capitalized either. So as retailers cut orders, uh, one problem is really planning for fall deliveries. And fall deliveries may be an issue too uh, because of the capitalization and networking capital and just managing cash tightly. Uh, so our liquidity analysis does reveal a fair bit of liquidity at uh, retailers, at department stores, about one to two billion dollars. That being said, expenses on a monthly basis are somewhere between 400 million and 500 million. So watching that and as you have these stores close, that's a key source of revenue 
and online isn't necessarily picking it up, and online can often be lower margin. Um, so it's it's critical, and people are really just trying to stay alive. Oh, I know in um, you know in, in Italy and France, some of the, the fashion houses have either repurposed of, of their cosmetics making into hand sanitizers. I think Armani and also Burberry are doing blouses for nurses in these critical times. Are we seeing similar efforts in the U.S.? Yeah, I think that's really what's happening. A lot of my contacts and vendors are really thinking about um, how do they work with factories to make masks and other items. I think it's a time for the industry to come together and, and really focus on these humanitarian opportunities and efforts. And that's part of what's happening. Mm -hmm. A lot of luxury goods and goods are emotional in nature, and this is a, a crisis. So um, I applaud you know that the, all these efforts and really rethinking retail in the context of how these companies can be uh, the most useful to society now. Um, so that's happening, and people are really going to forever change as consumers and rethinking brands and rethinking community. Mm -hmm.